All right, I want to have a talk about something that's kind of been bothering me about this whole M1 situation with Apple, and that's that they weasel worded the absolute crap out of their announcement. Now, during the announcement, which I did catch live and watched it all the way through, they frequently said the M1 is up to two percent or two percent two times faster or three times faster than the top selling notebook in on the windows side and they didn't say by whose metrics they were the top selling or where they got that data they just kind of hoped that you would just say yeah uh uh-huh uh-huh apple yep 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 and completely look the other way on it and i don't doubt that the m1 is going to be a bit of a beast however i don't like that apple felt the need to just completely bs their way through it like they did in this keynote. And if I look on Amazon for top selling laptops, and I'm actually logged out, well, use the private window for Amazon, and you may look, and number one is currently this Acer Aspire with a Ryzen 3 3200U in it. That is a dual core CPU meant for the budget market. So I would hope that the $1,000 MacBook Air can beat this thing hands down. We also have a 9300H, which is an i5. And this is, again, 500 bucks. I would hope that, again, the Apple Silicon for $1,000 can beat this. Now, if we go down here... Now, they didn't obviously show this during the keynote, but if we go all the way to the bottom, we can see the fine print here about what they did. And... They do use previous generation pre-production or production Core i3 based Mac Mini. The Core i3 is Intel's budget, like mainstream chip. Yeah, they have the Celeron and Pentium, but the i3 is the budget chip for the i series. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> And they do, I think, around here say they used a previous generation MacBook for these comparisons. And the thing is, with the MacBook Air, the previous gen MacBook Air, it's using an Intel chip, which they're known to run hot, and that's one of the reasons why Apple is moving away from them, thankfully. They they are known to run hot, and they are using a cooling system that is the most ridiculously stupid design I've ever seen in my life, where the heatsink is completely away from the fan, and they are doing, have nothing to do with each other, it, for the grand scheme of things. So if you're comparing it to a machine that's going to throttle with the lightest bit of load placed on it, that seems a little unfair in my opinion. Now... I'm personally of the opinion that benchmarks don't mean anything, or they don't mean everything, I should say. So, yeah, it's benching great on Geekbench, but I'm personally of the wait-and-see persuasion. I want to see, once these things are in people's hands, how they do it workloads that are not the specific ones Apple is aiming for. I want to see more gaming benchmarks. I want to see more, like... Things everyday people do. Because again, Apple has very... Feels like curated these benchmarks to show favor for them. So I want to see someone who's not biased. Like, again, like Linus Tech Tips. Or anybody who does not have a pre-existing you know, existing agenda towards Apple to actually test these ships and see how good they are. I believe they're going to be good... But I just don't like how, again, Apple just kind of, uh, you know, just like, hey, just believe us, please. We're not going to show any hard data. Just please believe us. And on that note, another thing I want to bust Apple's balls for, it's not on this page, but how they just talked about, you know, hey, we're environmentally friendly. You know, we love the environment, blah, 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 blah. And I agree. It's nice that they use recycled components in their machines, don't get me wrong. However, what really pisses me off is that they design Macs to be completely disposable. 
like all this if we actually go and find it here somewhere the memory is integrated into the cpu itself or the soc in this case so obviously i don't think the ram is going to fail <laughs> but you can't even you don't even have the luxury of being dos dude one and upgrading your ram anymore after the fact and that really troubles me because when i had my 2015 macbook pro that machine like very much hit a snag with me when i kept running out of storage on it how did i avoid throwing it away for the most part i put another ssd in it because you can do that with these machines you pretty much have to know what you want five years from now and design it that way or you just burn in hell pretty much and you have to throw the entire machine away and start all over again now you don't have to throw it away obviously you'd either take it to apple or sell it off and recoup your money but it still sucks because again the whole mantra goes reduce reuse recycle and there is a good reason why recycle is in the very last place on that list because preferably you'd want to keep something in the field longer that beats it getting thrown away broken down for whatever can be salvaged and then unsalvageable bits get thrown in the trash like it's more preferable to say upgrade your system to where it meets your specifications down the road rather than just throwing it away and buying a new one and i'm sure apple loves that because they make more money and that's why i think it's rich at apple's like mm, we love the environment it's good but you guys are encouraging our e-waste problem so I, I hate using the word or the phrase but it's like get out of here with that virtue signaling apple you only care about the environment when it makes you money. You don't care about the environment enough to, you know, support right to repair, to keep machines in service longer. You just want people to buy new stuff and you try to say you care about the environment so you look good while doing it. So, honestly, this is all why I'm glad I got out of Apple when I did. I don't like Apple anymore. I really don't care for them. The only thing I use is my iPhone. And iPhones are still, for the most part, repairable, but Apple is clearly starting to move away from that too, with the iPhone 12 cameras being bound and married to the logic board that they came with, and I can just see that getting worse and worse over time. So that's why I'm staying with my 11 Pro, and I'm not upgrading until they stop doing that BS. And if I have to go back to Android, if my 11 Pro dies, so be it. I mean, I'll, or I'll just buy another used iPhone or repair, actually try to repair the one I have. Personally, I'm just done with buying new Apple stuff at this point because, again, I don't like how they're trying to be like, look at us, we care about the environment, but we're designing products quite literally designed to go into landfill once the smallest little thing goes wrong with them. So, to stop from getting into just a humongous rant here, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this here. But thanks for listening to me, and, well, I'll see you guys later.